Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Thursday morning, Thursday the 4th of February. We give God thanks for, for bringing us through the night, for giving us rest, and to bring us to another day, to strengthen us, to ask him to give us his sufficient grace uh, to sustain us through this day, to live for him one more day as we continue our journey through this pilgrim land. We pray that he will sustain us afresh today. And so we begin the day with prayer and by meditating on his word. Let's pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that we may be known upon, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations praise you, O oh God, let all the nations, let all the peoples praise you, Oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our college for today. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And um, our psalm for this morning, Psalm 15, 1, 5, Psalm 15. Psalm 15, just five verses. <clears throat> Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain, the one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their hearts, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to the neighbor and casts no slur on others who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their minds, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be shaken. You know, whenever I read a psalm like this, sisters and brothers, there are two things. One is you realize, you, you ask yourself, am I any of these things? It says, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? In other words, who may come into your presence? Lord, who is acceptable to come in? And we are told that is someone who's blameless, someone who's righteous, someone who does righteous, 
who speaks truth, who doesn't slander, and so on. And, and, and then you, you go through, as it were, a checklist. And you say, is this me? Is this me? Is this me? And, and there is a sense in which, uh, yes, some of these things may be more applicable than others. Ah, uh, just a second. Is there someone at the door? Okay, where were we? <laughs> yes. Yes, I was saying that it, you, be, you use these sorts of songs as sort of checklists. And you realize that um, some, some of it, yes, may apply to you. And some of it may not. Because when you know your own heart, when you truly search your heart, you realize that you are not fully blameless <laughs> and so on. Um, and so in that, in one sense, yes, um, you say, how can I be like this? So that's one, that's one, because when you search your heart, you realize you're not fully like this. None of us are. And so we ask, how can I be this kind of person, this blameless, righteous person who speaks the truth and so forth? This is, a, this is something to aim for, yes, yeah? something to aspire to. Because we want to be near God. We want to be in his mount, on his mountain. We want to be in his sacred tent. So, how do we get this? The New Testament uh, provides us with the answer, of course. Jesus. It's always Jesus. Jesus is our answer to becoming blameless, to becoming righteous, to drawing near to God, to being in his holy, in his holy tent and being on his holy mountain. Jesus. And so the nearer we draw to Jesus, the more blameless we will become, the more righteous we will become, the more truth-telling we will become, and so forth and so on. We cannot do any of this by ourselves. We cannot be any of this. In ourselves, we are not blameless. We are not righteous. We are liars. <laughs> but in Jesus Christ, we can be all these things. We can be blameless, righteous, and truth tellers and people, what Tim Keller calls people of integrity, human beings of integrity, not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. Let me read what Keller has to say here. It's very good. Who gets to draw near to God? Those who speak true words, but do them in love and generosity. Those who are transparent, honest, and, and faithful to their word, not not always changing their minds. If we deceive, vilify, and flatter, if we make empty promises and overblown claims, we cannot expect God's presence in our lives. This standard not only challenges us, but also reminds us uh, we can go to God only through his grace. No one but Jesus ever lived with perfect integrity, but because he is our savior, we can go in him to God. Jesus is our savior from being, uh, from, 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 from unrighteousness and so forth. And so he will save us. So when we go to him, he, we go to him, we go to God through him. Lord, the sins of my tongue are so many. Forgive me for talking too much because of pride for talking too little because of fear, for not telling the truth because of both pride and fear, for words that are harsh and cutting, for hurting others' reputations through gossip, and so on. <clears throat> Purify our words, Lord, with your word, with your holy and righteous words. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> amen. <clears throat> okay, our New Testament reading, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and, um, and we are at from verse 20, from verse 20 to the end, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20 to the end. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in, the thing, in your thinking, be adults. In the law, it is written with tongues, with other tongues, and 
through the lips of foreigners I will speak to this people, but even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquirers or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convinced of, they're convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all. As the secrets of their hearts are laid bare, so they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you as a hymn or a, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation? Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If everyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret if there is no interpretation the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to god two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is said and if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down the first speaker should stop for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged the spirits of prophets are subject to the control of the prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should, do, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is, a dis it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only people it, it has reached? If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. And do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Amen. Okay, so Paul is finishing uh, this topic of order. You could say it's order in worship, order in, uh, the order in worship in a particular regarding tongues and on prophecy, and um, I think. One of the things, just to, I think the main thing to pull out of this is that Paul's point is that everything should be done orderly in the church. Everything should be done in a particular manner. There should not, there should not be any haphazardness to the worship service. There should be, um, yeah, order, <laughs> proper order. But the second point is that everything should be done, must be done so that the church is built up. So in other words, people are encouraged and people are, 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 are comforted and so on, edified. Uh, so, so whatever we do in the church, it should be done in such a way that God's people, it should be done in, so, so in an orderly manner, it should be done in a proper manner, but it should be done so that God's people are edified and encouraged. So, so, so the emphasis is mainly on prophecy. Uh, and he says, you know, so he gives a bit of instructions and you, you get the feeling that this is quite an informal kind of church. It's not very formal, quite informal. And so he is setting the boundaries of that informality. When you come together, you know, someone should have a hymn, someone should have a, a tongue and interpretation, someone should have a prophecy and two or three people can prophesy and so on and explain and teach and so forth. So you get this sort of informal setting. And he's saying, okay, the, put some order to this informal setting. Make sure that there is a certain way of doing things. When you come together, you don't just haphazardly do things. And uh and and you 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 allow you allow a certain amount of order into the worship. 
and, and so very important, he said, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the control of the prophets. And what he means by that is that just because you have a prophecy doesn't mean you are to tell it. Uh, you, you, are, you are in control of this. So, you know, there are people who are saying, oh, I'm under the spirit. I'm, I have no control. Well, the spirit doesn't take away control. Uh, you should, the spirit, in fact, gives you self-control. Uh, and so Paul's point is that, you are, that you, are, you are in control of this. So you do not need to say this or speak that. If you are speaking in tongues and there's no interpretation, be quiet. Speak to yourself and to God. However, if there is an interpretation, speak it. And, but take things in turn. Everybody is not speaking at once at the same time. And again, this is one of those things that is ignored in many churches, in some Pentecostal churches even today. Lots of people speak at the same time <laughs> rather, than, rather than what Paul is giving up. Paul is saying order the two things matters here. The, the ser church service must be orderly done. And it must be for the building up and encouragement of other people, of the members. Um, these two verses uh, about women have, have always caused all sorts of issues. Uh, you know, I, I, I think people read too much into these things. Um, again, the, these are probably cultural issues. Uh, just as uh, we read in the early days where Paul says women should have their head covered and so forth and so on. And men should not cut their hair. Or, or women should not cut their hair and so on. These are cultural issues, sisters and brothers, and we need to understand. We need to figure out how is it that, that women should not be should 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 remain silent in the churches, and it's a disgrace for women to speak in the church. What is Paul talking about? I can't go into that right now. But if that's something that interests you, we can talk about it some other time. But the point is. It is not a blanket statement that's saying women should not speak in church. Yeah, let's just understand that Paul is not giving some commandment that women should be quiet. Um, not at all, because this would contradict other places in the scripture where women do speak in the church. So um, let's not let's not take these words as some absolute command that is um, that is relevant for all time and all place. Okay, uh, let's understand what he's saying, and um, and let's not get caught up on that. Last point that Paul made, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, but do not forbid speaking in tongues. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. That's the key. And that's the thing we want to take away in our worship. Worship should be done orderly, fitting, decent, and the purpose of it. Well, one of the purpose of it is to build up and to edify and to comfort God's people. So let's let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this new day that you've given us. We are grateful, God, for your goodness and grace to us as this this day. We have never seen this day before, and, and we shall never see it again. And so, Lord, we ask for your help. We ask for your, for your grace to use this day wisely for you, to serve you and to seek to serve the common good in our community, other people that we meet today. Lord, watch over us whatever we are doing today. We ask that you'll keep us safe. If, if we're traveling, if you're going outside, protect us, Lord. Be a protecting shield around us so that we will, we will not be affected, adversely affected by coronavirus or any other disease and illness in this world. Be a protective shield around us, we pray. And so, Lord, keep us firm, keep us safe, keep us 
steadfast in your in your arms so that whatever today brings we will be we will be ready to face the challenges of today as the lord strengthen us we pray lord even as we think about our worship and we pray lord that you will help us in our worship whenever we gather for worship right now lord we gather as it were remotely but even then, we ask, Lord, that you will help us to focus our minds on you. That what we do is done decently and orderly. And that what we do will bring edification to your people. Glorify your name and comfort and build up your people. As the Lord direct our time of worship so that our, we do not do things haphazardly. We do not do things oh, in chaotic, chaotically, but we will listen to your spirit and we, will, and we will order our lives in such a way because the spirit is a spirit of order. The spirit is not a spirit of confusion. And so Lord, help us, we pray, in our time of worship together to be orderly in what we do so that you will get the glory and we will be better for it. So Lord, speak to us. Use whatever means. Prophecy, tongues, hymns, songs, prayers, through your word. Use all these things to speak to us and through us to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Father, we bring before you <clears throat> those that we've been praying for and we want to remember, especially this morning, Dave, uh, Emily and Emily's uh, and Sarah's family. Lord, we, 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 we remember Dave this morning. We thank you for his faith and for his fight. Lord, uh, He's come so close, and yet he, it, wasn't, it wasn't to be. And so, Lord, we pray that he will find rest this morning in your eternal arms. We pray, Lord, that he will, he will be at peace in your presence even now. We pray for his, 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 his wife, Sarah, and his daughter, Emily. We pray that you'll comfort them even as they mourn his passing this morning. And Lord, hear our prayer for them. Give them strength as they, as they seek to have another funeral, another farewell service for another member of their family. Lord, hear us, we pray. Lord, so many people are being affected by this disease and we are crying out to you because we have no help but you. And so, Lord, help us, we pray. Lord, remember those others who passed recently. Again, we thank you for their lives. George, Chioma, Jules, Janet. Hear our prayer for them and for their families, uh, even as they see closure in this world and await, await by your grace, the resurrection day when they will be reunited with their family member, with their loved one who have passed this world. And so guide them, Lord, be with them, strengthen them during this time of distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, those who are not well today. Remember Jane Lindsay and the Lindsay family. Remember Andy uh, Halkop. Remember Maxine and Paul. Noel and Maxine and Pauline Hayward and, and Buckle. Sammy, Mrs. Carr's brother. Tavern. 
his wife and his mom. Auntie Janie as well. Remember Jean and, Moni and, 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 and Monica in a home and Walter. Lord, hear our prayer for these, your children. Remember Sandra, Deborah's friend. Lord, remember these, your children. Remember Constance and Michael in Canada. And Lord, we pray for, we pray for Leah and all those who are job hunting at this difficult time. And we pray for Glennis and the family as they, they seek to say farewell to Vida tomorrow. Lord, we pray for them and you'll strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say St. Patrick's prayer. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. O gracious and holy Father, Give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so let's listen to our theme song this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to be with you today, sisters and brothers, in all your doings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.